are obsessed with the Connie Fife Show. It's about a lifestyle shift to move up or out. Hey, what's your jam? What's the one thing that really drives you? What makes you unstoppable? It's about opening a new door to live your dream. People give up way too early on their dreams. It's about enjoying the journey. It's about keeping it real. Damn, now the interviewee is interviewing the interviewer. I like this. It's all about you. I knew there was something else I wanted to do. Stop taking shit so seriously. Y'all can't do this. Take an outrageous look at life and laugh. This is the Connie Fife Show. We love you, boys. We love your jam. You need to be on radio. And now your host, Connie Fife. Well, hi there. It's Connie Fife, the unstoppable diva, and you're listening to the Connie Fife Show. Now, remember, y'all, you want you want to be sharing our show. You want to be sharing each of our episodes and be entered into receiving one 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 of our amazing gifts. I mean, if I would have been able to take you to my outside office where we have all of our giveaways, it's just covered with all of the gifts that have been coming in from autographed books. Autograph t shirt, everything is, has to be autographed. That's what I tell everybody. You have to autograph it and send it into us. Mugs, and um, I know I said t shirts, and like cloth bags, and oh my gosh, so many, so many, so many wonderful things. And today's guest also has a giveaway. We're going to be talking a little bit more about her giveaway later in the show. But again, just make sure that you're sharing. So you want to hashtag the Cardi Five Show and then also hashtag our guest. We want to make sure that you're watching and listening and sharing us with all of your friends. And thanks for coming back. Uh, we, I don't even want to say we, I, I love our listeners because you keep coming back time and time and time again. Whether you hear us on iTunes, on the C-Suite Network, Transformation Radio, we're in over 210 networks. We're, we're heard around the globe. Uh, last count, and it's hard to track it, especially with podcasting. You know, we're, we're told it's like about 5.5 million um, impressions of the show. And of course, that fluctuates up and down. But that's still pretty a uh, pretty, uh, good number. So I just want to thank you for being here, for listening to us and sharing us on all of your social platforms. So today we have a, a phenomenal guest. And when I was looking over her her information, when her team had you know submitted um, her application to be on the show, I was like, "OMG! Oh my God! I got to have her on here because she she went the opposite direction that I did." So many of you know that I was CEO. I was in the nonprofit sector for twenty five years. Okay, we share my my age there. But for over 25 years, I mean, um, it wasn't social services, but uh, I mean, Girl Scouts, yeah, social services. But I was also in the business nonprofit world of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and also the Greater Wilkes-Barre Chamber of Commerce of Economic Development. Some of those names get so long, I have to stop and remember what they are. But she also, she went from a position of website development, freelance marketing into the, the nonprofit space, but she does it differently. And that's why I'm so excited that she's here to share about it. So without further ado, as they say, joining us today is the nonprofit expert, Sarah Oliveri. Uh, Sarah, welcome. Welcome to the Kylie Fife Show. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. I love talking about nonprofits. I love talking about business in general. And um, it's just a pleasure to be talking to someone who used to be in the field. And um, you look very good for <laughs> 25 years out in the nonprofit <laughs> space. I said, out. Well, I was, I was um, complimented recently when I said I had a two and a half year old granddaughter. And somebody was like, What? And then we, we went into this conversation, and then he came back full circle. You have a granddaughter? <laughs> I said, oh, my, my mom used to say that. My, my mom was young. She was 16 when I was born. And we would be out, and of course, they would think she and I were sisters, and my kids were her kids. Um, so I guess I have that, you know, that young, young skin, young skin. I may just have to get the shape back in. You know, we'll be good. <laughs> So, so what, what inspired you to take the leap 
leaving your position as a freelancer, as an independent, to become an executive director of a nonprofit? So I actually, now I consult with executive directors. So I started out being an executive director. Well, I started as a program director and then became an executive director. Okay. I've been associate director. And then all along, you know, anyone who works in the nonprofit space picks up side skills. That's right. Not as they wear many hats. <laughs> One of the skills I had picked up was building websites, and which became digital marketing. And I did that. I was building a freelance business. Um, and it was really my journey of becoming a better entrepreneur that led me back to nonprofits. I think one of the mm -hmm. first things you start to learn as you, you know, learn about business mm -hmm. is that you need to have an area that you focus on, a niche right. of some sort. And, you know, when I first started, because I was thinking about going beyond solo freelancer and into kind of forming some sort of agency, some business that I could really grow beyond myself. Okay. And I'm sitting there going, like, I don't know what my niche could be, like, no mm. idea. <laughs> and then finally, of course, it hit me like a ton of bricks that I knew so much about running nonprofits. I had kind of left that behind, I thought. Um, but all my best clients who I could really help the most were nonprofits. Mm -hmm. So I started really doing marketing for nonprofits, thinking this was going to be it. But, you know, businesses have a way of sometimes you push everything you can into them to get them to move. And right. sometimes they pick up a momentum of their own and you're like, I got to catch up. Right. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, <laughs> I could share stories. I've been doing this now for 12 years and it's like there's days it's like, oh, wait a minute. We got to go there. Now. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. So I did not think I was going to be a consultant. I thought I was okay. going to be a, like a pro digital marketer agency for nonprofits. And what happened was this. I got some amazing marketers together to start working with nonprofits. And we'd go to the nonprofits and we'd say, okay, we're going to get your marketing. And we did something we called impact marketing. So not just marketing okay. for fundraising but marketing for actually helping them deliver their mission. So like mm -hmm. getting clients in, we thought a lot about how do we market to poor people, which there's like no research on because most mm -hmm. marketers don't target poor people. They're just like, right. poor people out. Mm -hmm. um, but he certainly can market to poor people, homeless people. Um, so we started like I was getting together great minds to think about these problems. And we go to the nonprofits and it's like, well, okay. We can't really market you until we describe your programs. Mm -hmm. And you haven't done it that well yet, which is hard to describe your own programs. Not to worry. We have an amazing professional copywriting team who are going to describe your programs. Just get us on the phone with someone who can tell us about it. Right, right. Oh, wait a second. It's hard for you to get us on the phone with someone to actually tell us about your program? What's going on here? And so we just started to discover mm -hmm. this theme. A lot of nonprofits, part of the problem of describing their programs was they hadn't really defined their programs clearly enough. They hadn't really defined, like, who aren't they for? Who are mm -hmm. they for? Because so many nonprofits have this, we're going to help everybody mentality. Exactly. Um, and because my background was in nonprofits, human service, autism field specifically. And I also okay. had gotten my master's in humanistic multicultural education. Okay. Program design is something I could do. So I started saying, okay, the only non-marketing, non-digital thing I'll do is come in and help you kind of shore up your programming so that we can market it. <laughs> but as soon as I'm into looking at their programs, I realize you don't have the infrastructure to to maintain a properly defined and marketed program that fills up. Right. And how I was kind of, you know, how do I deal with this? How do I deal with this? And then finally I had a client because I've always believed in transparency and I was sharing with my clients some of the things that I had learned for running my own business that so much is happening right in the entrepreneur space. And I had a client who said, would you come down and like, work with our team and teach them some of the business frameworks and, and help us reorganize. And I said, well, I guess so. Sure. <laughs> um, if you want to pay me to do that, like I never thought anyone would want that. And it right. was like, for me, it was my, my passion. It was like, right. this is the most fun thing I could be doing. <laughs> and they realized you could get paid for doing right. it. But the challenge is, yeah. And, and, and being coming from that space myself, um, I, I totally get how 
it's, I don't really want to say disor- disorganization, but they're busy putting out the fire. They're a social service agency. There's constantly yeah. something coming in. They're worried about getting the, the funding. They're worried about getting the state dollars, the, the federal dollars. I mean, it's just an on and on and on process for them. So to have somebody come in and say, oh, well, well I want you to not do anything right now except talk to me. They're like, no. <laughs> Yeah. So that, and that was my feeling too. You know, I think mm-hmm. coming from the nonprofit space, um, you know, I realized I loved it, but I had a couple things that I felt, I think, really differently than other consultants. One is I never wanted a client just to be reliant on my brain power because there's only one of me and I'm oh, only there right. so long with them. And so that made me a really reluctant consultant. Um, and then the other thing is that, um, I never want it. And I know that nonprofit people, especially in human services, they don't get off their moving train. And if they pretend to for a weekend, they don't know how to put what you gave them back on. Them. They, right. They don't. Like whatever we do, we have to board their moving train and mm-hmm. work from there. Or it's Great not gonna analogy. Work. Great. Right. Or else it's not going to work. The perfect analogy of it because they're constantly, constantly going. Even on weekends, they take turn. Who's going to man the cell phone this weekend? Somebody's got to be here for that emergency. Exactly. It's, it's like, it's like day, you're just a constant like, oh, my God, where do I go? Where do I go? It's constant. To this day, we know for our own marketing, one of the <laughs> best time for us to email executive directors Sundays at 9 p.m. Because they cannot help but being on their work email on a Sunday night at 9 p.m. to make sure everything's still going smoothly. That's exactly correct. 9 p.m. or if you have to during the week, do it very early in the morning because they're there early because I'm guilty of it. I know that. Um, And they're there early in the morning. I'm I'm saying like 5, 6 o'clock in the morning. Oh, yeah. Before yeah. everybody else comes in so they could see what's going on. So, yeah, that's yeah, the time so right, that, you want, that you want to get them. I know. I know. I tell my team that all the time. You want to get somebody early in the morning or Sunday night. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. That's never, ever, ever got it right. So, I mean, I, I want to ask you, I mean, because you, from entrepreneur to executive, entrepreneur, freelancer to entrepreneur or to CEO, where is your that mind shift? How have you changed? I know when I first came out of Girl Scouts, um, is that was Girl Scouts, Pentwoods Council. We did this major realignment with Girl Scouts in 06, 07. And when I was done, I was I I, I, I no longer blood green. My identity crumbled. Yeah. And it took me a bit of time to realized that I really had to do that mind shift. So how has your mind shift changed from one to the other? Yeah. Well, I think um, I've always been a very like positive mindset, like Mm -hmm. infinite abundance type person, but the nonprofit space is filled with kind of limiting beliefs, especially when it comes to resources. You know, we don't have enough Mm -hmm. money. We don't have enough resources. And I, when I was younger and in very much in the space of being in the nonprofit, I, I wasn't convinced that that was true, but I like had this real, like, I'm going to believe my elders, the people who've been doing this a long time, you know, I'm going to follow what they think, you know, is the way, the way that nonprofits do it. And I think through my journey of stepping out of that, um, I kind of, became an entrepreneur. I had a a digital media production company, um, which kind of merged with my website building. Mm -hmm. Um, So for a while, we were doing video production and um, documentary style work, along with the website work. But in so in leaving, like there was definitely this moment uh, that was happening right during like the worst of the economic downturn, 2008, 2009, 2010. Like it was really all for me, it was all time tied up in that. So I can't mm-hmm. say like I could say this was just because I left nonprofits. But I remember being in this space where I kind of gave up my nonprofit trajectory um, Mm -hmm. because I had, you know, I was in my 30, early 30s and Mm -hmm. I was thinking, okay, you know, like I have, you know, at the time I think I had, um, you know, 
six years of executive nonprofit leadership, and I had my master's degree, which would have set me up for a great job. But in the economic downturn, I remember one day I was applying for a job, and the, it was a job I would have gotten so easily a couple mm-hmm. years before. And the person who got it had a PhD over 15 years of executive director experience and had been like the director of Yellowstone National Park or something like that. (laughs) And I was just like, I just cannot compete in this marketplace. (laughs) And I'm going to put my focus into being an entrepreneur. But it took me so long before I was ready to say that that wasn't my side job before I was ready to say mm. that that was a business. And it took me, uh, the, the digital marketing, um, the digital media company, mm. my husband at the time had started and I had gotten involved helping, but I was like, this isn't my company. Like, I'm not going to, I'm just going to get you started. Before I knew it, I'm running the whole thing. And I think there's something tied up in that with being a woman. Like, it was just always doing something for right. somebody else. And it was a long time before I really felt I could own it and say, I am a business owner. I am an entrepreneur. Like, I can, I'm going to build this. I'm not going to have partners. And I mean, I'm, I work in partnership with everybody who works with me, but I right. actually get tangled up in. Um, some sort of like emotional or anybody who wants that much power, like probably right. it's going to be a good fit because we all work together um, at Pivot Ground. That's how we do it. Uh, I give, I'm very good at delegating. I like delegating, which does make me a little unique as an entrepreneur. Um, but yeah, it took me a long time to own it. But once I did, everything started to change. Yeah. And that's, and you, you really bring up a good point. Um, I, again, I was there. I was I was in that space. And just like you, I was I got called back actually by Girl Scouts to coach the new CEO who they had hired, who did have a PhD, who did come from a different Girl Scout council. Um, but the lady to find out, again, she wasn't a fit, and just because she had the PhD didn't really matter and that was the requirement at that time and but I understand exactly what you're saying that they were looking at those individuals because um, they're really slimming down you know trimming down on what they had looking at the resources um, you know and it was a time of that so they were looking for those individuals that had the big fancy letters after their name and right and I didn't um, so and again go also the the, the mindset shift like you said it took me probably two years to really, even when they called me back initially, I was like, hell no. Like, why would I do that? You don't want me. Why would I do that? And then after a while, I was like, oh, after like the fifth or sixth call, I was like, oh, wait a minute. Well, if they're going to pay me money and it's in a space that I really love, why not? So the day I go to meet the new CEO, because she was the one that was begging me because she just couldn't make it, you know, it just wasn't working. I go to meet with her. She never shows up for our meeting to find out she was let go that morning. Wow. That Yes. Wow. So I was like, oh, so then they brought in a temporary CEO. And called me and that temporary CEO called me and said, would you come and mentor me? I was like, first I was like, well, why did they just ask me to come back? <laughs> I hear you. Tell them I'll come back. Yeah. Oh, but I still didn't have a PhD, which was a requirement that they wanted. So I mentored her and she mentored her into retirement. <laughs> and then they brought somebody else up. The same thing happened. Uh, did some work with her, and that was 10, 8 years ago for her, and she retired last December. Wow. And, yeah. And I got that phone call. And I was like, you know what? Like I said, that mind shift has happened because I started working with the coach myself, and I remember working with him in Nashville. I'm sorry, my phone just rang. <laughs> and um, him saying to me, are you all in or you, do you just have a toe in the water? <laughs> and he's like, it just clicked. Like you say, it's like I had to realize that 
I'm all in this game. I'm, I'm yeah. going to do this. And, uh, and after that, like you said, it just, it just took off. And although I started 12 years ago, I really say I only start like six years ago. By the time I got my head in the game, because it took that long. Yeah. And that's so critical. And you know, it's important for nonprofits too. And yeah. like the things that I'm telling nonprofits mm-hmm. now and where we are at now with Pivot Ground, I said I was the reluctant consultant, right? So I right. do consult. But the primary thing we do is I took, I learned some incredible business operating frameworks Mm -hmm. from the for-profit space. Mm -hmm. But for myself, I had to pull a few together to really run a business the way I felt was like really Mm -hmm. slick. Um, Mm -hmm. I started my business with that intention, right? I finally got my head in the game. I was like, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I'm going to build a business that I love. Mm -hmm. I was in the middle of getting divorced. So while I share time with my ex-husband, with my son, who's now six, I have the full financial responsibility. So I needed to raise enough money to recover from being in debt and maintain a reasonable lifestyle and give my son like the upbringing that I wanted him to. So I was was hyper specific. And when you have a little kid, you know, you only get some, especially if you're separated, if anyone knows and you're sharing custody, you just lost kind of half your time with your kids. So the time you, right. that they are with you, you hold so precious. And I, right. and I wanted to have that time. And so I did the math. I ran mm-hmm. the numbers and I said, wow, I have less than 30 hours a week to work in my business or end on my business if right. I want to have this time with my son. So I said, I need to make, I need, I figured I needed to make at least $120,000 a year, which I only knew because I actually ran the numbers, run the numbers. Right. Because it's more expensive than you think it is. Right. So it is. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> right. I needed to do it something that I was passionate about. Right. No mm-hmm. one who comes from the nonprofit space can handle work that doesn't fill their heart with, you know, right. it has to. I'm just hardwired for that. There's no way around Mm -hmm. it. And I need to do it in less than 30 hours. 30 hours a week. I know. Oh my gosh. I got my laser focus on. And so I was really out to seek like, how do I run? You have to run a business very effectively and efficiently to do it like in that kind of way, right. not so much time, but with so much money. Right. And um, so I was getting learning these strategic frameworks. Mm-hmm. And basically what I ended up doing was first I pieced a few together for myself. And then as I, I realized that this is what my clients needed, this is what nonprofits needed. And, and I went searching, like there must be something specifically for nonprofits. And there just wasn't. Mm. So I took what I had put together and I right. built in extra pieces and changed a few things that would work for nonprofits, which have a few fundamental differences. And mm. so now we have, I teach people what we call the impact method. And it is, I think it's the first full like operating framework for how to run a nonprofit in what I call like a better way, right? To me, like thriving, being successful as a nonprofit means you're delivering on your mission like crazy as much as you can, but mm-hmm. you shouldn't be ble- you shouldn't be opening up your veins and bleeding for your non- no. You shouldn't. You shouldn't be. I'm gonna have to cut you off there because we have so much more to go over, and I have to take a really quick commercial break. And when we come back, I want to learn more about your giveaway that you're giving our listeners as well. So hang in there. We'll be right back. <music> The Connie Five Show is heard everywhere. You can find The Connie Five Show on most of your favorite networks. It's time to now recognize and thank our major networks for all of their support. In the house, we have Conscious Business Radio, C-Suite Radio, Transformation Radio, iHeart Radio. We are also heard on Google Play, Apple, Radio, Stitcher, and so many more that I just can't keep up with them all. I'm Connie Pipe, your unstoppable diva. We'll learn more about our gym and how we can work together at my fancy swanky website, ConnieFifeShow.com. I'll see you over there. Until then, like, 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 share, share, share. Now back to the show. And we're back and you're listening to the Connie Five Show. And our unstoppable guest today is Sarah Oliveri, and I hope I said that right. Yes. <laughs> and we're practicing. So y- y'all, y'all know me again. I went from a nonprofit CEO to becoming a lifestyle entrepreneur. Sarah, she, I, I guess the best way to put it, what you've done, you've really 
created an out-of-the-box strategy for nonprofit organizations to find a way that they can be successful without bleeding. Yeah. Every yeah, day. That's really it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that that's just just for, just phenomenal. Um, let, let's just jump really quick into the giveaway you have. Pivot ground. Yeah, so <laughs> Pivot Ground is my company. It's the company mm-hmm. I built. We work exclusively with nonprofits. Um, we teach people the impact method and we provide consulting. And then we still actually do marketing work for those clients who are doing the impact method because the impact method gives nonprofits a unified strategy that they can quickly bring all sorts of the consultants they might work with otherwise into working on their core strategy. That's great for marketers. And because I have all these like marketing connections, we're able to provide our mm-hmm. clients access to marketers who wouldn't work with them otherwise. Right. If you're anyone who's been in the kind of marketing world, the top marketers are many of them who would love to work with nonprofits and they would even do it for free to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. They know that their efforts even for free are wasted on nonprofits because nonprofits right. aren't able to handle what they can do. And so, and they would never touch your RFP, not with a 10 foot pole. Right. Um, and they probably would just turn you down even if you had the money. So I've kept that network of marketers to be able to work with my clients because once they start using the impact method, Mm -hmm. um, then they can get value from investing. From those those resources. So let me let me ask you a couple a couple of questions. This is our straight talk. Um, Well really and I think I know the answer to this is why are you unstoppable? (laughs) Oh man, you know I think um, if you put your mind to it with enough focus, yeah. you, you know, I say, I say there are three things to being successful or mm-hmm. being unstoppable, right? One, and they all, they work synergistically together. One is focus. The more hyper focus and specific you get about what you're mm-hmm. going for, the more you can just go for it. Um, another is like, Capacity for me personally, that means mm-hmm. having intention in what I do. That's like trying to make the right moves. Right. And the third thing is iteration. Tr- keep trying, but don't just try and try and try and try. Try, review, see what worked, learn those lessons, right. and then move forward again. And those three things are, those are the three things I start that started propelling my business forward. Right. And those are three things that are kind of built in at the core of the impact method as well. Mm-hmm. And those three things have made me unstoppable working all wow. three together. Wow. Wow. So uh, will you ever be satisfied with the work that you're doing? Oh, man. I mean, yes, I'm so, you know, when I see nonprofits succeeding, when I see executive directors feeling like, they can see everything that's going on and they can also relax at night. Um, that is so rewarding to me. Um, but I'll never be done. I am always, mm-hmm. I'm it, in some ways a very much a systems and processes person. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's always something to be improved, right? I just said iteration, right? So I'll <laughs> never stop iterating. But, um, I, you know, I tend to be one, I think I've heard there's two types of thinkers, right? There's those who are like, always seeking something like it always has to be better. They're looking for something perfect. And there are those who are happy with good enough. I am happy with good enough and it's very fulfilling to me, but I'll always be improving. Mm, I love that. Love that. So, so what's next? What's your plan from here? So um, right now we've been really focused on training nonprofits in the impact method, smaller Mm -hmm. nonprofits too than we used to work with, as well as larger nonprofits. Um, Our next step, because we set a goal this year to make organized, optimized, and thriving the new MO for nonprofits. Mm -hmm. And that is a big journey because most nonprofit people, they throw their hands up and they say, you know, we're a nonprofit. We don't have to be like amazing at business, but I'll tell you nonprofits, you have to be you better. You have to be better. Your mission is more important. That's it's, what I believe. It's, it's your mission. I mean, I mean, you're under a magnifying glass. You're, I mean, there's so, 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 so many reasons that it's, it's not your mother's nonprofit anymore. And you no. really do have to run it like a business. You, 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 right. 
And that that is such an together. argument that I had with so many board members. <laughs> so yeah, so in order to achieve this mission, what we're going to start doing probably next year is training other consultants. Okay. Use the impact method with their clients. And okay. Because there's no way we can work. There are like a million, literally, there are actually over a million nonprofits in the United States. Oh, there is. There is. I mean, just look in your local community. I mean, you have local, you have state, you have national. Oh, yeah. Um, really, there's so many. So where can our listeners find you and learn more about your programs? Sure. They can find me at pivotground.com. Um, you can also find us on Facebook. If you are an executive director, we have a Facebook group just for executive directors called Executive Directors Ready to Thrive. I am in that Facebook group nice. personally answering questions. I do Facebook Lives in there. Um, so it's a great resource um, if you are ready to run your profit, nonprofit in, uh, in a better way. <laughs> better, better for way. you and better for your nonprofit. Um, find us there. Well, we'll make sure that we share that in our show description as well so people know know to go there. Because I, I still get phone calls I, um, from groups, nonprofits, organizations wanting, asking me if I would come in and do it. So I'll, I'll know who to send them to now. <laughs> Definitely, for sure, for sure. Well, that's all we got for today. But I want to thank you for being here, uh, Sarah. You've been such such a joy to talk to. I love the work. Thank word. you. And we do have a giveaway. Oh, um, yes. I, we have a few things that we give away, but I hand-selected one that I thought would be useful for both your nonprofit audience and your for-profit. You can find it um, at pivotground.com forward slash Connie Fife, all one word. Oh, love that. Pivotground.com forward slash Connie Fife. Love it, love it, love it. So thank you again for being here. My pleasure. Thank you, Connie. And thank you all for being here and listening. And remember, share, share, share so you can receive one of our amazing giveaway. And make sure that you're tagging Sarah so she knows that you're sharing as well. I'm Connie Five, your recovering CEO, and we continue to move ideas forward. And we are keeping the passion of life activated. Now, if you want to be seen, you want to be heard, and you want to be advertising on the Connie Five Show, just visit the Connie Five Show. Not the, but visit ConnieBikeShow.com for all of those details. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure you're checking out our talent concierge. I mean, basically, we, we represent the world's most daring mind. So if you have a successful career and have a, have a message to share, just check us out at TalentConcierge.co. And I'm going to leave you with this message. Don't let the behavior of others destroy your inner peace. And that's from the Dalai Lama. I'm Connie Fife, the Unstoppable Diva. You've been listening to the Connie Fife Show. Thanks for being here. And until next time, keep the passion of life activated. Hey, y'all, it's Connie Fife. Thank you for listening to the Connie Fife Show. Check back often. You don't want to miss any of the good stuff. If you like what you hear and would like to be a guest on the show, head over to the ConnieFiveShow.com to apply. While you're there, check out our amazing advertising opportunities that will put you right in front of your perfect client. I will see you over there. Do yourself a favor this week. Activate your power and be unstoppable together.